Hi, my name is Marios. I'm a doctoral student in counselling psychology living in London, and today we're going to be looking at Doja Cat's song, Demons. I don't have any interest in looking at the supernatural, you know, Illuminati, religious elements. I'm looking more at the meaning of the lyrics and what messages she might be trying to send through her art form, not so much on any meanings that don't relate to the physical world. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing to notice is this theme around sleep. Sleep is about, uh, let's say, the fandom here. You're unconscious, you're not sensing reality at that point. You're in a resting stage and it's very subliminal. She's speaking to that person or this representation at the point of being asleep. You are asleep and I'm haunting you. This is just a figment of your dream state, right? Like, I, you're just seeing this whilst you're asleep. This is not real. I do know that some fans felt that she had been rude or, or crossed them in some way, or maybe wasn't being grateful enough. She doesn't take this view. She's saying everything that you think you're experiencing and seeing about me is just in your own head. You're seeing a part that's impressionable, a part that's influenced by your own subliminal drives and d desires, repressed parts of yourself. You're trying to look at me as the bad parts that you cannot see in yourself. She is the sleep paralysis demon to Christina Ricci, who is the main character from the victim perspective, because this is all in the theme of an 80s horror film. So sleep paralysis is where you wake up during sleep, so your mind is awake but your body is asleep. And this is often complemented, let's say, with the feeling that a demon or some evil presence is in the room with you or maybe sitting on your chest. And this idea of paralysis is interesting. So paralysis relates to fear and inability to move, rigidity, and these are all things that she would see as the people who are criticizing her, right? They are paralyzed in their way of thinking. They're not able to move on. This is what I want. This is what I want to see. This is the doja I'm used to. Um, and they are paralyzed in that state. And she is bringing that out in this metaphor around being asleep and being paralyzed within that sleep. And also sleep paralysis has this element of hysteria. Because if you do experience it, I've had it before, you kind of panic when, when it happens because you really do believe that that demon is there. It feels like it. once you wake up, it's clear that you were just in this strange in-between state. People who wake up from sleep paralysis don't see a demon. It's not there. It's not in the physical world. But you really work yourself up about this fantasy, this thing that's in your head. What I'm seeing here is that she's saying, you're paralyzed, but I'm evolving. I'm changing. You're seeing more of me. You're being critical, but actually you're the paralyzed one. I'm going to own the fact that I have these flaws and my flaws have been brought to the public. I've been in the public light for much longer. Now you're all very willing to tear me down because of my success. Demonize me and I will own it. And in fact, she's, turn she's literally turning into a demon for this. You're demonizing me. You're calling me all these names. You're saying that I'm a bad person or that I've transgressed in some way. I'm going to own that image. So demons in the biblical sense, they are seen as adversarial, they are controlled by the devil, so they're like separate entities to what we are. They can take hold of us or influence us, but they are not us. Whereas a, an older form of what demon means is a kind of uh, an element of our own spirit, so some sort of guide, something that does influence us, but it's not necessarily viewed as evil. And so this is important because the chorus says, how my demons look now that my pocket's full. She's saying the demons that she has are not new. So now that my pockets are full, not my pockets are full, now I have demons or now you see my demons. It's how my demons look now that my pockets full. So people are now looking at her demons differently. My imperfections are so much more visible to you now, right? Now that I'm rich and successful, you want to tear me down so much more than you did before. But I know that I have flaws and I'm not necessarily going to apologize for them. I'm going to say, yeah, you've seen me just like everyone else, but you are paralyzed in your inability to see me as a person. You'd rather judge me. You'd rather brand me as this demon. Got you playing with your nose. Yeah. Percocet got you playing with your nose. So Percocet is a strong painkiller. Uh, which is known to be addictive and has had restrictions placed on it in the past because of this. It caused overdoses, caused dependencies, and it was over-prescribed and people were getting addicted and abusing it. So she's saying Percocet got you playing with your nose. Now, this is a pill, so she's insinuating playing with your nose. The only reason you would play with your nose is if you took it 
through that means. So you didn't take it through the mouth, you took it through the nose, which is an abuse of the drug. So she's saying this painkiller, this need to be numb from pain about the realities of people having flaws and people having demons. You want to numb yourself with this Percocet and I see you and I see your inability to feel this unsafe, fear-inducing, demonic side or real side of her and, and the audience themselves. This is making you look stupid. If somebody catches you playing with your nose, that's embarrassing, right? It's a shameful thing that we might do in private, but we never want anyone to see, and it's seen to be uh, childish, gross, and this is making you look foolish. I've caught you. I've caught you in your ignorance to be able to accept the less than ideal parts of yourself and the less ideal parts of her as an artist. Now, going to this theme of horror, so this whole video is themed around 80s horror films, and horror films are a form of art. The general idea is it's not real life, right? Horror is developed to kind of pull us into or pull out of us this innate fear that we have of the unknown. Darkness, the fear of other people and what they're capable of doing to us, fear of the supernatural, being alone and being vulnerable, having evil forces come and influence us, or visit us or try and harm us or kill us. But horror is exactly a play on your own mind, right? It's not real, yet we feel scared. We feel scared of these pictures on a screen that are not real, they stay with us, and even though we know they're not real, those are actors, we're afraid of it. So it's tapped into something deeper than our logical understanding of the world or our own lives, and instead it's playing on our innate human fears. Now these are all themes that she's, she's creating this feeling that this is what everyone is feeling like because of her presence, because of her success. She, they feel threatened by the fact that she is so successful and that her art is so influential. She's making this money and having this recognition and this is creating a feeling of horror. I think what she's trying to get at here is that this is what's happening within the criticism of her. They're creating this image of something that is not real but actually tapping into their own deepest insecure fears. It's not her fault that her art is let's say, triggering to people, but rather that they are unable to face the fact that they have their own fears internally and they they actually have nothing to do with her. She is just performing an art. The fear that you hold is something that is your responsibility and not hers. And I find this really funny when people do this. They will criticize someone and call them names and say that they are, you know, a sinner or that they are, you know, they've lost their way or that they're a bad influence and all this stuff. And then when they adorn themselves with the imagery of demons or something like that and actually perform as that, suddenly people are shocked. It's like your criticism literally led them to do this and now they're taking the power back by saying yes and also I'm going to use it to further amplify my art and further uh, propagate my message. And generally the idea is her individuality is being demonized and that's because of people's insecurities rather than her actually doing anything wrong here. She's non-conforming, that's the point. Another theme that I've found in this video is she's flaunting her success a lot. And rather than focus on any particular lyrics, I think they all kind of hint at the same thing. You live like me in your dreams, which is alluding to her success and that she's saying, your dreams are so filled with what I'm actually living that this is why you're so keen to have me look like I'm the one with the problem and I'm the one that should be criticized your own jealousy is really projecting onto my success and you're trying to pull me down because of you feeling like you're not achieving as much as I am. That's why you're living my reality in your dreams. She's kind of saying, my size is now my downfall, but that's more a reflection of you than her. Now, the, the, you know, the bigger they are, the harder they fall is what they say. And it's really because people kind of like that. The audience likes to see that someone who is able to reach that level actually has vulnerability, is subject to harm, is, you know, human like the rest of us and may fall from grace. It's ironic because the audience lifts them up to that level, to that status. And then once they reach it, people are like, hmm, this isn't quite as fun anymore because you're so big and I don't relate to you and I can't see myself in you anymore. And then they're going to pull it away and they're going to say, right, now we want to see you fall. One thing I will like to point out Sit, I'm a sheep, I'm a cash cow. I'm is I'm a puppet, I'm a sheep. I'm a cash cow. And she does this pause, which I think is pretty funny. She's saying, you think of me as somebody that is controlled, that I'm not myself, that I've become a sellout. And she ends on, with that tri triplet there, I'm a cash cow, which is a nod to the song that made her famous, which is called Moo. Moo. 
The chorus is something I'm a cow, something I'm a cow. Can't say it because I don't want to get demonetized and I really need that two pounds per video I get per month. I really like that. She's being really playful. And of course, the meaning of cash cow, interesting because she's saying cash cow means a cow that is always able to give milk and therefore is kind of an infinite source of money. So this idiom is saying, well, she's nodding back to where she started from and how far she's come now. But also she's using this image of a cash cow to, to show you like, hey, I know I have this boundless potential. I'm thriving and I've, I've done an incredible amount in my career um, and she's owning it. And she's also really smartly tying that in with the song that made her famous, which was a, a very silly camp kind of song, but that's what made her famous and hey, if it works, it works. So in summary, I think Doji Cat is giving this message to her haters or fans that have been overly critical of her. And she's saying, well, I'm going to turn the, turn the mirror back onto you and say, right, actually your hate of me shows more about you than me. And yes, I am flawed and I will present myself as my flaws, as my demons, as a demon. But actually what this is saying is you are only looking at me this way because I'm successful, because I've reached a certain status and I've achieved a certain amount. And that makes you uncomfortable. And also maybe she does like to dip into darker themes and people are uncomfortable just with that. But this is a part of her creative expression. She's also saying, get lost. I don't need your approval to get into these themes. I find them interesting, they inspire me, and I'm gonna create art around it. She's really embracing herself and saying, I'm gonna be more myself, not less myself, as a response to this criticism. So she's very self-affirming in this piece of work. Yeah, hopefully you found this interesting. It's quite different for me, but as you can tell, I love Doja Cat, and I like analyzing these kinds of things. I think it's cool to see how artists express themselves and send messages through catchy music which you don't need to analyze but if you do there's some cool hidden messages and no i don't buy the idea that the only motivation here is to influence us negatively or to like turn us to the dark side or anything like that i think they are i think they are a reflection of what the artist is trying to say a message but we don't need to go into this whole conspiracy theory nonsense i think it's really a step too far and I think you can see what I'm getting at. Anyway, if you like this, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you'd like me to do more videos like this, or if you have any specific videos or songs that you want me to look at. And yeah, hopefully you'll subscribe too. I have to say it, sorry about it. And see you in the next one. Cool, look after yourself.